Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to some more Entropia content. Big shout out to everyone who watched and liked the video yesterday. I was floored how many likes and views it got so quickly. Can't believe it. So this community is definitely more active than my Clone Evolution one right now. So I'm going to continue making Entropia videos for the time being. Might make a Clone Evolution video coming up. But today's topic is going to be something I've been wanting to talk about and get some feedback from viewers and other Entropians is what's going on with Rocktropia. I guess I really should have went to Rocktropia to do this episode, but I'm still in my shop finishing setting up my items for sale. So I'll just give a little bit of a, a tour of me doing that while I discuss what's going on with Rocktropia. Now, I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but uh, Rocktropia has pretty much been abandoned for like the past two years. <laughs> and uh, I think it all happened where Never Die had a whole bunch of plans for Entropia. And as like he's still the acting president as far as I know. Does anyone know? Do we still do the president system? But yeah, before I get into that, I'll just give a little glimpse of how my items have been going. I placed a whole bunch in the shop <clears throat> and I started to price them all. Prices are a little bit high right now because I'm going to leave them high for the first week or two. Then I'll probably drop by and lower all the prices. So just to give any high rollers a chance to just come in and clean it out. <laughs> no, that won't leave everyone behind once uh, once my shop sits like unsold for like maybe two or three months. I usually come in and just slash all the prices. Right, for uh, I was mentioning in yesterday's video that I like to do crafting and I used to be into clothing crafting. So I do give everyone a little bit of a glimpse of how crafting works. Or maybe I won't get into that today, but I'll just show you some of the loot that I got from crafting. Alright, these are the hats. And if anyone's crafted on Rocktropia, little sneak preview for tomorrow's episode. This is some of the, the stuff that you get when you're crafting on Rocktropia is Rocktropia themed clothes. So that's one of the crafting trip tips I'll get into more detail tomorrow. So anyways, here we've got some hats that you can make. Exclusive to Rocktropia. You won't loot these on any other planets. So that's a little sneak peek. <laughs> some of my crafting advice. So here we have the stylus hat collection. You may have seen the stylus hats around. They're not very popular, but... Man, when it comes to making these hats, you can see a lot of the ingredients aren't going to be that hard to find on Rotropia, which is the one knock I have with a lot of clothing prints. Notice that when you're on Tulan and you get some clothing prints, the odds of finding the materials to make those are almost impossible. I'm always up for a challenge, but I don't want it to be impossible to get the ingredients that I'm making. Which, it kind of makes the blueprints useless. So anyways, there's what some of the stylus hats look like. You can see like less than 50 crafters in the game have a copy of this to use. But that's not my favorite one. I think one of the stylus hats, I've actually used the print before. Maybe they've up updated the ingredients. I don't remember the green CDs being required. Like I can get CDs on Rocktropia, but they're not the easiest. Ah, uh, here we go. We're getting into alternative Listerium and just Rocktropia records. Rocktropia records are very common to loot, so this is one print to make hats so you can just start making right away. So, look, only, uh, let's see. Only 35 people have ever had this hat in the game. And the nice thing too, when you craft up these stylus hats, they're not stupid TT values. Like I know a lot of times you get clothing prints, you craft them, and you look at the TT value and it's like hundreds and hundreds of pet. So you're looking at like a huge investment just to repair that cloth to get it back to full. I don't know, there's probably an advantage maybe when you're coloring and, and doing other sort of stuff, having super high TT is good, but... 
I don't know, when I craft, I want to make crafting clothing items that are affordable for players. So when they buy this Stylus 3 hat, it's only going to have like a 1 or 2 ped TT value, so they don't spend a fortune trying to repair it to full. Yeah, I sort of vaporized so much. I got some more white rhino and cannabis oil on the menu. Yesterday I fucked my back up so bad, I almost thought I had to go to the hospital. It was at the point where I could only stand up. It's like any time I tried to lay down or sit down, I was in complete agony. And I tried a bunch of stretches the day before to see if I could help set my spine a little better than it was sitting. And I highly recommend just going to chiropractors and getting professionals to do it. Because when you do it yourself, you can fuck up. And God, was it was a big fuck up. <laughs> But thank God I, I broke down at night and just fucking loaded up on uh, ibuprofen. Oh, fuck. And normally I can't take ibuprofen unless it's an emergency because I've already built up a bad allergy to it. But, man, when I fucking took it, half the night I was like, oh, fuck, the ibuprofen didn't work. And then I woke up in the morning, I'm like, oh, fuck, it must have worked. <laughs> All of a sudden I'm not sore anymore. Now I tried the Tylenol approach and it just wasn't cutting it. I could tell because I had this huge knot on the bottom of my back, like a fucking muscle knot. And it was fucking swollen like crazy. And just touching it would sting like a bitch. <laughs> so it wasn't even my spine. It was some sort of knot of muscle or... I don't know what it would be. Some fucking bump. <laughs> ah, here we go. Look at the ingredients for this one. Style this forehead. Alternative and Zaria. Let's see how many people have had this hat. Yes, well, the, there's just a glimpse. I won't give all the information about all these stylus hats. <clears throat> but the prices I put for them are pretty fucking cheap. Well, I screwed up. Eh? Like, I put the, the good hat for cheap and the shittier hat prints for expensive. I'll <laughs> fix that. <laughs> Don't anyone run to the store quickly. Uh, hopefully I fixed it before I leave. Knowing my memory though, it might be worth your while to come and check. <laughs> now I remember this player Shire I used to sweat with a lot. She was nice. She came to my shop. She's like, yo, I've noticed a few mistakes. You price shit way off. And I was like, oh fuck, thanks. <laughs> I put stuff way too cheap. I think what was that? I put a whole fucking stack of like a hundred K sweat and priced it for 10 K sweat. So I was like, shit, someone could have came by and just raked it in. <laughs> I swear it's not just a marketing clip. Tried to get you guys into my shop. <laughs> yeah. Big shout out to Shire. If anyone knows her in real life, try to get her back into the game. She was sweating for years. I think she's had kids or something and maybe she doesn't have time to play anymore. And I think even her husband or boyfriend used to play a lot. And he hasn't logged in. Hopefully they're okay. They're part of that one uh, guild, I forget. I should look it up. I think Jaguar or something. Now I'm going to do some Entropia videos about the sweating community. I know a lot of people are anti-sweating in Entropia, but there is a fair big community of people who actually love sweating in the game and have found like multiple ways to make it really fun. <laughs> if anyone's new to Entropia and they don't know what sweating is, it's sort of like the grinding in a game. Like you know in a role-playing game you always can go somewhere and grind and level up. That's what sweating is. Oh, look at that, eh? Shire's been gone so long, it doesn't even post her information anymore. No, it looks like Shire might be gone for good. That'd be a shame. I'll have to talk to Gale. Gale was uh, the leader of that guild. Anyways, I forget how I got sidetracked there. 
So there's a bunch of other hats that I got, and I'd have to say if you're a beginner crafter, the stylus ones are going to be your go-to. But if you're, oh yeah, Shire was the one helping me price these prints. Yeah, and anyway, so it said, oh yeah, shit, I should finish setting that one. Yeah, so I set most of the prints around 40 ped. Which is kind of halfway between super expensive and a good price. Like I said, if these hats don't sell prints quickly, then make sure to swing by my shop again in a few weeks or months and you'll see the prices have dropped. Unless I really love the shit and I want to keep it, then I might keep the prices a little bit higher longer because I don't even really want to sell it. I'm just putting it up there in case anyone's rich and wants to, to use their money to try to pay to win. I'm definitely not against the pay to win philosophy because I like that and in the ways if you can still accomplish the same goals without paying it makes it even more of a challenge you can say hey I beat the people that pay to win oh yeah just like my new uh, sub subscriber used to or he says all the time in his videos what's his name again oh yeah serial overdrive kind of get nervous when he subscribed I was like oh shit it's like I'm a big fan of his videos and it's like so it would be like if you were a musician and all of a sudden Britney Spears subscribed to your channel, you'd be like, holy fuck. <laughs> so sorry if I'm a little bit nervous today. <laughs> now I like Serial Overdrive's channel because I really envy his voice. His voice sounds like perfect for listening to. So I noticed when I listen to my voice and replay it, it's like, oh fuck, I can barely understand my words. I have to try to articulate my vocabulary correctly. <laughs> it's like he's got it down. <laughs> now I think in his videos he was asking if he should do more long format videos where he just goes on and on rambling like hours like I do. And I actually prefer to listen to those style of videos so if he wants to make a couple more like that. I know what it is for me is I end up usually like getting tired and just turning on my TV with my Nvidia Shield running YouTube and I like to throw in some longer videos so I can put it on for like two or three hours sometimes without even having to move. It's good when you're in agony from like a sore back or something you want to listen to something. I know a lot of people are like oh they hate the fucking long videos but I figure if you really hate long videos, you could just watch in segments, right? You don't have to watch the whole thing at once. <laughs> Alright, so I guess I'll get on to more of the topic of Never Die while I finish these blueprints. Yeah, so I won't show all the video or all the prints, but you can see I've got quite a good selection going in my shop of different hat prints if you want to get into prints. And for beginners, I recommend the stylus. The other ones are more advanced. There is a couple in there, the advanced ones, that are easy to make. So I shouldn't say just the stylus ones are easy. Alright, when it comes to clothing and entropia, it's not just hats that I was able to loot, but I also looted a bunch of shirts. So I'll show you my shirt collection. Hey, I should share this one episode with that chick who's into clothes and entropia. I was telling her I was going to show her my collection of prints. Anarchy, Distorted, Heavy Metal. And a lot of these shirts actually aren't even possible to make either. Like look at that, Alternative and Belker. Those are ingredients you can pick up. It's not like those fucking Tulane prints that take some bottles of shit that you can't get anywhere. The nuclear blast one, I found that one I wanted to make, but it was hard for me to get some of the ingredients because they were in the PvP areas only. Alright, so that's just the shirts that I have. And the one knock I had on the Entropia clothing is they did need a little bit more women's clothing. Like almost everything I have there is either men's. Like I think all these shirts are men's. I think maybe a few of them might have a female version, but I doubt it. 
So I put a few of the charm and different weird prints. Can't remember where I picked those up. Maybe Arcadia. Or no zombie, so that would still be a Rocktropia. Yeah, for when it comes to crafting, you may have realized, oh, maybe I'll save this for the crafting video. I want to talk about Never Die. Because I came across a lot of the shit in yesterday's video that I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, I started to put out some of my clothing prints. I'll do this before I leave the shop today. As I got a whole bunch from Tulane, and Tulane actually has ones that have female clothing too. So I'll have some female clothing prints in my shop. It won't be just men's. And I started to notice, I, I always thought that mostly guys played Entropia, but now that I've seen actual YouTubers and streamers, there's quite a few chicks play. Or young women, I should say. <laughs> now I'm sure there's older women that play too, hopefully. If you're an older woman that plays, you should start YouTubing. <laughs> Alright, so the top shelf, what I did is I put a bunch of the, what is it, vehicle type component things. Welding wire, space thrusters, the armaments, energy sources, the warp drives, and the Bonzo Slim Jim. That's the big one. And you'll notice I haven't priced them yet because my back was so sore yesterday I couldn't finish. So I'm going to try to finish today. I don't know if I'm going to be fucking trying to walk or sit today, how it's going to go. I'm worried when the ibuprofen wears off. Alright, so on the next shelf, I put the Spears. Oh, and the PRX collection. So if anyone wanted to see how many PRX vehicle prints I have, here's a nice good look. 1300 of the Biohazard. Limited Editions, 1500. Sport, 1000. <clears throat> the Roadster, 1300, Superstar, 1100, and the Double Dragon, 1200. So if you wanted to make those six PRX vehicles and want to corner the market, just swing by my shop. You can fucking pick up quite a bit of prints. <laughs> Alright, so I'll get into the monster trucks next. We got the Horny Devils, Vite, Vamp Bite, and then the regular monster truck. I'm a little bit low on these ones. Well, except for Vamp and Horny Devil, I got a few. 1200. Monster Truck, I got 800. Alright, so the wheel blueprint. Yeah, so I get, these would be some components to put vehicles together. You'll need the Monster Truck wheel. That print sometimes sells for ridiculously high prices, so I probably won't let it go too low. I think the monster truck wheels are sought after items, that's why. Then we got the wet ski steering column. I haven't really got too much in the way of components for the wet skis yet. Someone was telling me there's some other ones, so I'm keeping my eye out for those. And I got the vehicle batteries, I'm trying to stock up more of those. I don't usually loot that one, I just bought that one from auction. Some other vehicle stuff. Oh yeah, and then the bottom section I put two of my best swords. This one here is the limited super stacked blueprint that you win from winning Crafting Mania. It only has three clicks because they're super clicks. And I also have the hero sword. People were mocking me for years. I think I've had this hero sword blueprint for like, I don't know, over five years. And then... Uh, there's mocking me because you can't get the ingredients to make it. The Minotaur heads or whatever, something was gone from Next Island. Well, now that they've rejuvenated Ancient Greece, all these components are available for sale again. So I was going to sell the Hero Sword print for cheap because you couldn't get it, but I'm kind of glad I kept it for so long because now I'm pretty sure the Hero Sword print will go up in value. Right now it's already got a decent markup. Let's see, how many clicks of it do I got? 31 clicks, that's pretty good. I can't remember where I got this print. I think someone was telling me that they looted it in a Hall of Fame on Next Island, and they sold it to me for cheap because they were disappointed that they couldn't find the ingredients to make it anymore. And I said that I would gladly give them some pet and just wait it out. Hopefully, 
in a few years it, they would come back and lo and behold how many years was it <laughs> five probably <laughs> Yeah, so I love this Hero Sword print. The thing that's nice about the Hero Sword print is the sword it makes is unlimited. I think the markup on each sword is around a thousand ped. Could be wrong, maybe it's 500 ped, but it had decent markup. And I like the name of it, Hero. <laughs> No, I haven't really decided on that fucking price to put for that other print either. The winning from the Crafting Mania. The thing is, is you can loot like shitloads of ped from using it. Like it could be a hundred thousand dollar fucking Hall of Fame. Or not hundred thousand dollar ped. But you could also use it and get nothing. So it's like, holy fuck. What a risk, right? Like hell, I have really high crafting skills, so if I used it, I'd probably have a really good chance of fucking nailing a good fucking, at least a global. If anyone wants to see what this print does, just check into my archive. I got an episode called Crafting Mania or something. And then uh, in that one, you can see, because I put it into the crafting terminal and show you what the results would be. Excuse me, man, I gotta eat my multivitamin soon. Alright, so that's just some of the blueprints that I set up for weapons. Here I got the hoverboard, speed bikes, fucking weird tank vehicles. What is it called? The Pig V? Omegaton, Desert Walkers, the Sturm shirt. I think the Omegaton ones I got for a little global. The Sturm shirt or Stum shirt. This one was, I think, my only crafting Hall of Fame before I, I won uh, Crafting Mania. They gave me, like, I forget, like 500 ped or something. Or maybe it was 300, somewhere around there. And then this print. So this print was part of my Hall of Fame, and I was supposed to sell it and get a whole bunch of ped, but I've just been hanging on to it because it's such a rare print, and I love having rare prints. I think I put really high price on it if anyone wants it, but I kind of want to keep it. That's why I put the price so high. <laughs> then again... Alright, so, yeah, that was that. So, got some carpet prints. I think I looted those ones, too. Alright, here's some of the more regular vehicles. I don't know how to say a lot of these ones. I'll just call it the Nears. Gun Near. Sair Near. <laughs> Slept Near. <laughs> Must be something to do with Swedish stuff. Yeah, this one is the, the one that I like the most because these vehicles are very common. You can sell them pretty good. It's over 1,800 clicks, so... I don't know, these things had a markup of like 7,000% like just a year ago. And then they fucking tank because some people started selling their collections. So I'm not really too eager to just fucking price it dirt cheap and sell it, but... We'll see what price they end up deciding. Well, yeah, and then my Sand Runner collection. I don't know if anyone's done vehicle crafting on uh, Cyrene, but you can loot some of these Sand Runners. So, the reason there are different stacks here, like you see Sand Runner 1s, and then two stacks of Sand Runner 2s, it's because there are actually two versions of the number 2. One is colored and one's non colored. Same thing with 3, colored and non colored. I didn't even realize that either when I was looting them. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to stack them together and they wouldn't. And then I realized it was a slight variation. I don't know why they did such slight variations. If it was intentional or some sort of fuck up. Alright, so that's been my collection of prints if anyone wanted to see those. And tomorrow's episode I'll be showing you how to loot these prints. Some of the tricks that I use to get them. You can tell that I do shitloads of crafting. 
And the reason I do that is I found methods in crafting where I can break even or even profit. I know a lot of people brag about being able to do that and can't show you. I'll probably be able to show you some of the details, but I can't show you everything just because it'll make it too easy for everyone to do it and then it'll drive the fucking competition to do it way higher. There's no like magic glitch or anything, it's like uh, just some strategies and I'll give you some of the ones that I use. Maybe some hints on how to find the other ones. And I'm not trying to brag saying that they make me shitloads of money either. Breaking even on crafting is pretty sweet. Because then you can just keep getting your skills and keep looting prints, right? So that's really the key I've noticed in Entropia. If you're trying to profit a lot of times, that's asking a lot. But if you can manage to break even, that breaking even is going to fucking help you keep skilling and breaking even. And then once your skills go up, it'll make you be able to break even on either even bigger things. Like, Alright, so downstairs I just threw a lot of my junk. If anyone wants to buy some shelving units, I got it in stock. I put all these like cheap ass branches as low as they can go for one ped. So if you want like a one ped section for shopping, there's some stuff down here. A lot of this stuff was just taking up room in my Calypso inventory, so I brought it here because now you can bring stuff without pirates taking it. Alright, so that's all the stuff for my shop. The next thing I'll do is finish up the video with what I promised, and I'll talk about Never Die. Now it's some pretty bad news and good news and a lot of questions that I hope maybe viewers can answer. Now I was figuring uh, my sponsor for my other show, Clone Evolution, wanted to do a quick message. So I guess I'll, I'll do that and get ready to take the teleporter over to the VIP stand. And from there we'll talk about some of the Club Never Die stuff and all that jazz. Alright, so quick message from the sponsor. Today's show was brought to you by Crack! Crack! It'll fuck you up. <laughs> Thank you, sponsor. No, I was just showing you there, I cut to the wrong scene. Is I have a little scene that I got ready from Rocktopia's website. So, yeah, maybe I will show you that. Just one second. <laughs> no, what happened was, is uh, I checked out the website yesterday for Rocktopia. Remember when I was doing it and I was going to show you some of the stuff about my booth at Camp Crunk? Well, it's not just the website for Rocktropia that's down, even their Rocktropia Facebook page has been pretty much abandoned. And there's some comments in it where people are like, dear god it's been over a year and no comments or any updates, what the hell is going on? And then uh, there's also been some people that invested in Never Dies, like wallet system that he had. Oh, sick. Yeah, my post was actually one of the last ones that was made. Like, I took this image in my shop at Rocktropia, and how many people were collecting at it every Sunday. And I was, like, showing, like, wow, this event that Doc's been hosting are amazing. Look at all this shit that he's fucking did. He's got tons of people. You can look. There's even people looking at my booth right now in that picture. <laughs> so, yeah, that's some of the awesome shit that was going on in Rotropia, everyone was so happy, things were going great. And then I started to ask, like, what happened to Never Die? It's like, why did he all of a sudden vanish? Like, even his, his online profiles and stuff, he hasn't been very active. But then I found out he was doing some movie shoots for a big movie that I'd just seen the commercial or series that's on Netflix or Amazon Prime or something like that, one of those services. 
So I encourage everyone to check that out. I'm pretty sure I've seen an ad for it in Entropia. So I'm pretty sure that's where he's been. And then I also heard that his wife died in real life. So I was like, holy fuck, is that true? I don't even know if it is. It's, it's a bad rumor to spread if it is. So I'm sorry if it's just a rumor or whatnot. But no, and then there was the whole wallet thing with Never Die. Apparently some of his investors got really upset because they had invested in uh, the Never Die wallets. And all of a sudden that closed so they lost all their investment money so i'm hoping that something didn't happen to never die or maybe it's just the movie hopefully his wife didn't die it's like holy fuck man if his wife died then i could definitely see why he would have went awol for a while like i definitely wouldn't be able to take it oh yeah and that was the other thing i heard there was some sort of fucking yeah, there was a debate going whether or not Never Die got into a dispute with Mindark about his wife's profile after she died. Something about uh, who would take ownership of it or something. Like he was going to pass it on to his daughter, I think. So, holy shit. That's some pretty intense rumors that are going around. I don't know if anyone wants to help address that. Like, I, it really sucks that Entropia has been pretty much, or Rocktropia has been abandoned. Like, I noticed, yeah, there's the Club Never Die sign, right? Now, I noticed something was fishy because Rocktropia used to do the best items in the game. Like, if you were there for, like, uh, Christmas or New Year's, they would give those yearly items. And those were the fucking amazing ones on Rocktropia. And because I own estates, like, I forgot to mention that in yesterday's episode, if you own a shop or, like, a some sort of estate on a planet when those gifts come every year you get bigger ones for, for being an estate owner just like depositors get bigger ones too so when i was on rocktropia i was like oh yeah i own camp Kronk. i'm getting some sick items this year and all of a sudden the items just stopped rocktropia wasn't giving anything i was like there's only one explanation for that i can think of is that it was abandoned yeah, so there's a lot of evidence that Rocktropia has been abandoned. The official website was not working yesterday. The Facebook page, you can see the last comments are saying, what the hell, it's been over a year since anyone's posted anything. I'm hoping there's some sort of good news. Maybe Never Die is going to be back at any moment, and he's got a whole bunch of sick updates for the game. Hopefully him and Mindark have managed to mend fences. Yeah, the other thing that I guess everyone should probably know, if you don't know already, is Never Die had a big plan as president to like change how a whole bunch of upgrades to the game. And he presented his plan with all of his upgrades that he had worked out. And some of well, most of the community, including myself, rejected the plan saying it was horrible ideas and no one wanted it and it was basically uh he had this idea about implementing teleport token system so if you wanted to travel around calypso and you wanted to get from certain teleporters there'd be ones that all of a sudden would require tokens to use and i was really objecting to that plan because i was like shit i don't want to have to pay to use more teleporters we just got rid of the the fee to land on Calypso and all the other planets and I was glad to see those fees gone but then after like a week of thinking about it I was like shit that plan actually makes a lot of sense in a way because the problem with the fee with the landing on the planets was there was no other way around it like you either paid or you couldn't land but the good thing about teleport tokens on a planet is there is a way around it. You can just use a vehicle and take a vehicle from one area to another. So you wouldn't actually have to pay the fee. That teleport token would be optional. And the other nice thing about it too is requiring more vehicle travel to avoid paying the teleport token fee would be good because I'm a vehicle dealer. Like I craft vehicles and shit like I need more vehicles to be buying and sold. So technically that idea for me, while well, I was thinking of like, what the fuck am I thinking? Like, why would I object to Never Die's plan? His plan would actually benefit me immensely. <laughs> I 
And then I was thinking too, if Neverdie was smart about it and he wanted to sell that teleport token idea, he should have said that it would require sweat as one of the main ingredients. So that way it could fucking kickstart the sweat industry. And then you'd have fucking so many players that love sweating. They would be like, oh shit, President has a great idea. It's going to use sweat. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm kind of hoping maybe there's a chance that maybe the Entropia community can bond together as like a token of fucking appreciation to never die and condolences for his wife dying. We could try out his teleport token idea and welcome him back to the Entropia universe. It's like I'd kind of like to see that. Like I know a lot of times never die has always been in my good books, but... It's always the same situation where I hate on him for a while and I'm like, holy shit, I think he was actually right about a lot of things. <laughs> and I like eventually catch up, I'm like, holy shit, his ideas are actually great. Like you think about how much he's done for the game too, right? Like the planet Rocktropia, him and all the stuff with fucking Motorhead, it's my favorite planet. So why would I be hating on the guy? I guess sometimes you see someone who's so successful for making huge profits in Entropia with those legendary sales and it just makes you so envious of it. <laughs> just human nature to fucking be jealous, I guess. No, one time he invited me to go on a hunt and I said no and then right after he went on the hunt he got this like epic hall of fame and it fucking made it into the, the, like, the all time list was that gorilla one or when he was fighting was it King Kong or something yeah I got invited to that hunt said no and then watched the fucking Hall of Fame I was like dear god when never die invites you to a hunt do not say no right <laughs> like, you gotta be fucking crazy <laughs> remember when I was talking about the times I got screwed in Entropia <laughs> And really, that's no one's fault but my own. <laughs> Jesus. All right, I noticed yesterday's video, I, I forgot a couple things to finish. I never showed that when you want to buy shops, you have to click on the estate thing. I think I got sidetracked to talking. So then you have to go into this list. And then you can look for shops in here. I haven't checked to see if they have any. Now all these other places, people are asking, can you make apartment shops? It's like, yeah, you just buy a shop or buy one of these, uh, like, I don't know, like those deed areas. I haven't owned a land deed area. If anyone wants to comment, can you put a shopkeeper in your land deed areas? Or probably not yet. Yeah, yeah. They're still working out the details for building the estates. But some place that's already established, like the built-in towers or something, yeah, you can buy an apartment in the old Megaton, just put a shopkeeper. Ah, oh, here, we do have a shop for sale. Sick. So if someone wants to see how much a shop cost. Remember how I mentioned yesterday there are small and large shops? You can see this one is a small. Twin Peaks Mall. That used to be a very popular mall. I don't know if it is as much anymore because Twin Peaks wasn't looking as packed the last time as I remembered. I think it's because the whole trade thing in the bottom corner, now that you can trade there, you don't really have to meet at Twin anymore. Before, a lot of people would always meet there. I'm sure they still do to some degree. Yeah, so that's the price you're looking at paying for a shop. If I had to guess, this one will get zero bids. Like 19000 That's... Roughly how much I sold one of my small shops in Emerald Lake small, but I did it in a private sale. If I put it on the market, like on this, I doubt I would get a bid that high because most people on the auction are going to be looking to lowball, trying to get cheap ones so that they can resell it. The whole being a real estate broker thing. Yeah, so that's sick. Yeah, and then there's really two places. They can be for sale in the estates, or you can go up here and click Global Auction, and sometimes Entropia, the game, like Mindark, will be selling estates here. I think that's how I got the Arcadia one. I could be wrong, though. They might have posted it on the regular estates. 
Oh yeah, and in the video I was saying it's not possible to do what I did, and I was thinking, shit, no, that's not true. Because there are a whole bunch of new shops that are coming out. Pretty sure Next Island is adding some shops. I heard rumors that other planets like Toulon are going to be adding shops. So yeah, what am I talking about? Like really, there are still lots of opportunities to do what I did. Just go to those planets that are new and developing. Try to scope up some of the fucking cheap real estate right off the auction. And then resell it to someone in private. Like shit, I didn't do something that was that amazing. And really, I didn't even come up with the idea either. It never dies who I copied it from. I was like, instead of being jealous about him buying and re reselling real estate, why don't I try to do the same thing? Use that as an example instead of being jealous. Alright, I'll try to keep today's video under an hour. So we got about a few minutes left that I can cover some stuff. So hoping to find some shopkeeper pads on auction. I was checking there's only mannequin ones right now. Well yeah, for housing and signs. I noticed when you're trying to buy a sign for your shops, when you look at a lot of signs that you can buy on the auction, some of them will have ridiculously high trade terminal value. Like look at this sign, 300 ped in order to re repair it to full. So what I do when I buy signs for my shop, This is one that I just picked up. Ah, they put it into my inventory. But no, if you pick up certain sign classes, see if there's one. There are ones that come with, let's see. Ah, here's one. And you can see like normally this thing sells for anywhere between 50 and 80 ped and the person who bought one this week for 50 <laughs> you're looking at him now I was gonna buy that sign and resell it or use it and put a new sign out in front of my FOMA shop so anyways not to keep bragging about it but I wanted to show a uh, Look at the trade terminal value. It's way lower, right? Eh? Like 72 instead of 300. So keep an eye out. You can get some signs that have way lower trade terminal value. So when you have to go repair it to make it work, you don't have to break the bank. I don't know, someone wants to post in the comments, maybe there's advantages to using the high trade terminal ones. You can create better ads, maybe. Yeah, and it's got like fees that you have to pay to create the ad so when you make an ad make sure you make it correctly or you're gonna have to pay to fucking change it some of them do images and text some of them come with pre-programmed images that you can add text to some have multimedia that you can either import or create this one does not but I like the gigantum screen because it's fucking huge you'll see it it was the one that I had in that picture from Rocktropia. Yeah, so I don't know if anyone wants to post in their comments what they think that what's going on with Rocktropia. I don't know if Doc has any of the information about it. I think he's still been around. I even seen some people in the comments say that Never Die still is around. He's just less active, maybe. And I don't know what happened with the investors. Maybe everyone got their wallet money back from that. I haven't heard. Alright, so tomorrow's episode, what I'll be doing is going into my crafting. And I'm going to have everything finished, priced in my shop by the end of today. I'm going to try to stop slacking, get all that finished. And then once all my prices are set, I'm going to fly. After this, swing by Calypso. I forgot all my ammo in Calypso. For some reason I put it in storage. So now I have to go in there, pick up all my ammo. I have to pick up the Gigantum sign. 
probably going to swing back with the sign and drop by FOMA. Put my sign up at either in the front here. Somebody wants to come by and buy these things so that I have room. <laughs> that would be helpful. No, and then uh, I'll put the big sign here. Or I might put it inside. Where do you guys think I should put the sign? I was thinking maybe putting it above these prints and being like the best vehicle print shelf in all of Entropia. <laughs> now I really need to put some quad prints on there if I want to claim that. Those quad prints, I don't know what it is, is I just never seem to be able to loot them. And I fucking do a lot of vehicle crafting, so I don't know who's looting these quad prints. And I guess the markup on them is so high because maybe you only get them during the Hall of Fame. Like some of my best prints here, like the whip and the fucking, the other ones, they all came from Hall of Fames. Now I'm pretty sure there was something else I wanted to cover that I forgot in yesterday's video. Oh, I remember what it was. I was going on about the story about my booth at Camp Crunk, and I never finished it. It's like the guy that owns this booth here, his booth never used to be there. It used to be just mine and the guy next to me, Big Daddy. And then uh, I was talking to Big Daddy about it, and I'm like, hey, Big Daddy, me and you got the only shops here at Camp Crunk. It's like Park Place and boardwalk or whatever the two monopoly places I'm like hey maybe we should sell one of our shops to each other so we could have the monopoly either you own it both or I own both and we just make it like one owner has both and then he was like no he didn't want to sell his and I'm like yeah I didn't want to sell mine either so so that monopoly plan sort of fell through and then this other guy came along the, the guy that owns this new shop here and he started asking both of us if we would part with our shops. I don't know what Big Daddy said to him. I'm pretty sure he said no also. And I said no. And well, I said yes, but in a catch that I gave him some ridiculously high price. I'm like, I love this shop. I will sell it, but only for like, I think I quoted him 40,000 ped or 50,000. I'm like, man, unless you're giving me the money to buy a mothership, I don't fucking want to sell this thing, right? So then he was actually considering it, and I was like, holy shit, I hope he doesn't say yes, because I fucking really don't even want to sell it. And then uh, what happened was, I think he talked to Doc, or even Never Die, told him his situation, that he wanted to want to own one of the shops here, but neither of us would sell, except for my ridiculously high price. So then the game helped him out by creating a whole new shop and selling it to him privately. So now the third shop just appeared next to ours one day. But Big Daddy, what he did is somehow in part of the deal, he got his own shop where they gave him a fucking gigantic, like, giant, like, a uh, tangerine size shop right behind this one. So if you go down there and walk a bit, I, if I was on Rocktropia, I would just show you. So yeah, Big Daddy got a big giant shop. And then this new guy got control of both of these booths and he actually invested money in it and opened the crate mission which i'm glad he did that like that's better for everyone like me and big daddy having both of the shops and neither of us unlocking the instance was kind of cheese so i don't blame the game for doing it but i was like that's kind of weird how that all went down eh? it's like here we had this exclusive deal where we had the only shops and the game undercut us and built a shop right next to ours. <laughs> I try to take it all at heart or lightly. <laughs> In the way, it's like the Chinese farmer tale. I wanted to keep the shop, so thank God he didn't buy it from me. My goal really is to invest enough money into Entropia one day that I can afford to unlock the instance at Camp Crunk. So it won't just be his, it'll be mine too that's unlocked. But I'm not doing so well financially in real life, so depositing isn't going to go the greatest yet. 
but my sales in Entropia are doing decent. Some days I like to laugh that my Entropia and me are in a battle of who can be more successful in life. And sometimes my Entropia avatar kicks my ass. <laughs> He's doing much more successful. <laughs> How bad is that? <laughs> I was thinking that would be a country music song in the future. My avatar's kicking my ass. <laughs> Broke my hoverboard. <laughs> Jeez, I better stop vaporizing or I'm not even going to be able to speak anymore. <sighs> Alright, yeah, so that's my upcoming plans for Entropia, and anyone wants to post what they've been up to lately, if they want to meet up in the game, I think I'm all set for trying to add people via Skype, either on a live show or pre-recorded. I know I've talked to a bunch of Entropia players who want to do it, and i got to start to message everyone. I don't know, I've just been so leery about doing it, because a lot of times I get fucking technical issues. When the technical issues I get happen, I get so mad. <laughs> I want to crush something. <laughs> Gonna end up smashing my computer. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching the show, everyone. If you can do the whole liking, subbing, and sharing, jazz, and think what else was there? Oh yeah, make sure that you never buy any <laughs> products from our sponsor. It'll ruin your life. <laughs> And yeah, I got all the other links below. If you can help me out with watching Hido TV or signing up for Entropia Partners to make some extra ped in the links below, that'd really kick ass too. And yeah, big shout out to everyone who watched and liked and subbed. Holy shit, I got so many subs from my last Entropia video that <laughs> I couldn't resist making another one right away. <laughs> so it's all thanks to you. See you later, guys. Catch you later.